How y'all doing? Uh, welcome back to what we gonna call talking with big fella, where we talk to all type of cool ass people about cool ass things. Uh, today's guest, we got America's favorite comedian. That's what it say on his Instagram page. Of all time, thank you. Yeah, of all time, and you know, if it's on Instagram, it must be true. Ladies and gentlemen, my man Chad Riding, Chad Riding. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me here. Woo! <laughs> I just heard claps in my mind. We'll, we'll edit those in later. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I think Cam say, nah, this is one shot Live thing, to tape, man. we're done. Yeah, this is it, man. That's the only so, way to do it. Like, it, that's what kills me is, like, doing something in post-production. I'm like, okay, I just shot this with five cameras. Now what am I going to do with it? Sit on that footage for the next 10 years. Uh-huh. <laughs> and look for an editor that's going to overcharge you and under-deliver. Yeah. Nah, that's, I, I don't mean to say about editors, man. They cool people, too. But they are flaky. And, Man. and that's the thing. It's like that's that's one of the reasons that appeals to me about this place is like if I can do something live to tape, if all my friends have to do is show up and be funny, like phew, they can do that. Real shit. You know? That's all the way real. Yeah. It's like editors and web designers. <laughs> well, I'm both. That's the oh thing. Like, my god! So yeah, oh I majored in man. broadcasting uh, and I worked in local TV and radio in Knoxville, and then I moved here to do comedy and started doing web development because I could uh, triple my salary immediately. So I did web development for a good 10, 15 years. And, yeah, I'm as flaky as anybody. I'm the worst. Are you kidding me? Because, like, I was in a hotel room in Wichita somewhere getting work done in between beers, you know, in between shows. And so (laughs) it's like, you know, yeah, my work got sporadic, and then I got off track as far as staying up to date on all the latest trends. So it's like if you ask me to build a website now, I could do it. But it's not going to be great, and it's not going to be done as fast as some kid in his 20s who's been working hard at this. I'm done. Yeah. You know? Well, really, I mean, even easier, man, we just take that that long flight to India, man. And <laughs> That's it. I get on Fiverr all the time, and I'm looking at, like, I'm trying to build an app, and some, like, here it would take thousands and thousands of dollars in a team, and they would own half of it. And some guy in India told me, he's like, I'll do that for $300 cash. You keep all the code. I'm like, done. <laughs> like, we ready. <laughs> Forget. Sorry, America. The jobs are going elsewhere. Uh, yeah. I'm broke, and I got people, I got stuff to do, man. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to all my, uh, my Indian friends, man. Thank you for your service. Man, man. Woo. And, uh, and I love, uh, what's my favorite dish, man? A good tandoori? See, like, Sitar here in town, like, I, 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 yeah, I wanted to go and immerse myself in other cultures. But, like, sometimes with the pandemic, like, what that entails is me getting takeout from the, my favorite places in town. No, nah, see, what you, do, what you do if you want to immerse yourself in the culture, you got to find the culture who got a buffet. Yes. And then that's how you emerge yourself. You yeah. sit kind of close to it almost. Yeah. And bam, you might as well be an Indian. <laughs> well, all right. That's kind of disrespectful. <laughs> that's as close <laughs> as I'm going to get. <laughs> Me too. Uh, except by marriage or something. I don't know. I don't Ooh, know how it man. works. Okay, I'm going to get off that one before I say something. <laughs> don't need to be said, man. Yeah. So, Chad, man, first off, man, thank you for coming in here. Thank you for having me. This is great. Man, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So... The sponsoring thought of you coming in here, even though I know you just wanted to come look at my pretty face, man, and <laughs> tell me I'm beautiful, you are doing a comedy show here on Kneecat, man. Right here at Kneecat, uh, it, it's going to be a, a national stand-up is a nonprofit organization that uh, tasked with promoting local comedy in Nashville and the comedians around town produce shows and other stuff, and... Um, so we're doing a national stand-up showcase. Um, so it's a comedy nonprofit. It is. So yeah. So like we create stage time and other opportunities for young comics. So some kid wants to be a comedian. He doesn't know how to do it. We'll tell him everything he needs to know. Get him on stage and help him along his way as long as he needs us or wants us. Really? Yeah. So I mean, the cool thing about stand-up is it's a very small circle of people who really do this for mm-hmm. a living. And so, um, and you, when you see somebody who's young and funny, you want to help because you remember when you were that kid who didn't know what was going on. And so, you know, it's, it's a good way to, to hang out and, and laugh and meet the funniest people you're ever going to meet in your life. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, there's no greater joy to me than to, to, to book somebody who's been coming out to open mics for a few months and doesn't know anything, like just has five minutes of fire. It's my favorite thing in the world to book that person on their first real show that's booked that's and great. then and put them on stage and give them you know 
a little tiny bit of money. Hey, <laughs> man, you know, you know, you know, it comes from the heart. Yeah, because yeah. It's, that's that's the funny. It, like when I see somebody do stand up for the first time ever, I don't care how good or bad they were, as long as they were cool and they weren't disrespectful to the room or you know or, or off or like yeah, a terrible yeah, person. Yeah. I will definitely buy that person a beer as soon as they get off stage and tell them to keep coming out because that's that's a tradition that was done for me yeah. and that's what you do for the new guys when they come out. You that's try right. to now week two if they come out and they do that same lame material and they don't get any laughs. I'm not even gonna make eye contact with them. Yeah. But that first week I'm gonna you like, know because it's did hard. It. It's hard you to try it. that for the first time. So it's like I want to reward that and make them feel welcome in our scene. You know. Man, I tell you what happened to me in my comedy journey, right? Oh yeah. So. Uh, all my friends who are comedians, they always tell me, like, nah, they say, you got the hard part, which is the stage presence. It's yeah. like, a lot of people got to actually do a bunch of shows to get the stage presence part. Right. I was good at, and I'm, I'm real good at just being funny on stage, because, I mean, I've been hosting stuff for a long time. Sure. But it was the actual trying to be a comedian part. Yeah. Adding the jokes and all that. And then I started reading books, because... I feel like if you're gonna do something, it's an art form. Yeah. Like a crowd, like respect the art form. Mm -hmm. And it's a difference between just being a funny person and a comedian. Yeah. And you see that at open mics every single time where it's the funniest guy in the office shows up and he wants to do something. And, you know, your your internet forwards aren't gonna fly oh, in man. front of a group of people. Oh no. You know, and they'll give you some leeway if they know it's your first time. But if you're not funny, like you're they're not gonna laugh. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 tough, but you're right. Like I can teach somebody how to write a joke, and you could read so many books yeah. about how to write a joke, structure, do all this stuff. But you can't teach somebody how to have a good personality, how to yeah. be engaging, how to be interesting. Like yeah. you know, you can't teach any of that. It's interesting because it's like, man, I, I think I might join the the comedy nonprofit. Man, I think you might be able to help me, man. Come on out, yeah. Okay, where do y'all do it at? So like around town, like every bar and restaurant has got a stage and a mic set up. Yeah. And so we sneak in on those off nights. So like there's an open mic at the East Room on Tuesdays. That's there's... where I started my, my open mic journey, man. Yeah. Oh, the East Room is the best, and they're so supportive. We d we broke the Guinness World Record there uh, several times for the longest uh, stand-up comedy show, Multiple Comedians. We did that there. What is the longest? Well, previously the record was 80 hours uh, done by the Laugh Factory in Los Angeles a while back. And so we doubled that. We did 184 hours in 16 minutes. That's eight days, basically, of nonstop comedy. What do you um, mean nonstop? Nonstop. We like, did not literal. take a break. So every comic had to do at least 15 minutes, and they couldn't come on stage for another four hours. And we just had to schedule it. So, you know, some guys would come up and do an hour-long set, or uh, and some people would just come up and do 15, 20 minutes, but we'd stage them throughout the week or as long as they were in town. And um, so we'd put people at multiple times and have big celebrities show up and just do one spot and get out, but like, also, like, back our to guys. Back to back to back to back to back. Constantly. So... One guy gets off stage, MC runs back up, and me or my partner, uh, DJ Buckley, who envisioned and co-produced this festival with me, would run up on stage and introduce the next guy, just <laughs> lick his, as fast as you can. And um, nice. yeah, so we, we, we yeah, we, we did that. We, we, and we thought the only thing dumber than breaking a world record, doubling a world record like that, it would be to break your own world record by five minutes. So that's what we did for the next three years is we broke our own world record by five minutes every time as part of the National Comedy Festival. So Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. It's crazy. It's the greatest, dumbest thing we ever did four times. Yeah, We'll do it again. As soon as we're able to like get together and do yeah. something like that where you've got 200 people in a room for eight yeah. days straight, we'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, man, t tell me about the comedy show y'all doing here, man. So this is uh, going to be a, a, a pretty straight showcase where uh, I'm, I'm going to bring in some of the funniest cats in town, and we're going to have each of them do basically what, what, uh, what, I would, what I'm going to suggest to them is to do like their Tonight Show 5. So if the yeah. Tonight Show calls you tomorrow and says, come on over and do your best five minutes, that's what I want out of them. Yeah. Now, what they do is up to them, <laughs> but that's the direction I'm going to give them, <laughs> and we'll see what we get out of it. So I'm trying to uh, – and so we'll have a live audience, and we'll have uh, all, all kinds of uh, fun going on in here, so it, it, it's a good taping. But yeah. then they'll come out of here with, like, a – whatever, a three, six-camera uh, tape of yeah. them doing well, yeah. doing their best stuff. And that's invaluable, like, if you're submitting to festivals or whatever. And also, way. it's content for the channel. You yeah. Know? So. So – you just doing it one time, or is it going to be like a... This will be the first. So I'm going to do that often, but I also want to produce a bunch of other stuff here. we got a bunch of ideas. i got a bunch of collaborators that are getting ready, a bunch of the local comics that are 
very disappointed that they can't really tour right now. Yeah. That have all this creative energy, you know, and, and nowhere to really do it. Like, now, I built a TV studio in my living room, and I live stream and produce stuff in my house a lot. And a lot of other guys do that, too. But, like, this is so much better. Uh, yeah. and, and this is a beautiful facility. And um, so we thought, why not take all this stuff we're already doing, all these ideas we got bouncing around, and bring them in here and give it to the people? Damn so, right. Damn right. Yeah. Damn right. Uh, you know what? We're going to go to a non-commercial break real quick. Nice. Yeah. All right. We back like we never left. I'm back with my man, Chad Ryan, with the Nashville Comedy Festival. Well, we'll do that next April, but... Uh, What's the nonprofit called? Nonprofit is called Nashville Stand Up, and the website's NashvilleStandUp.com. Oh, uh, National Stand Up is where you go to to find out all the open mics, right? That's right. So we've got a list of open uh, mics. There's open mics every day of the week, sometimes three or four a night, and we've got a list up there. And then, uh, you know, if you okay. check out our Instagram, you see all the flyers and all the photos of these idiots out trying to make people laugh every night. And, uh, and we yeah. try to, if, like, Nashville Comedy on Twitter is a sister account of ours where we basically just retweet all the Nashville comics and try to get more eyeballs on these funny, funny idiots, you know? Where are you from originally, man? Born in South Carolina, raised in Chicago, and I've been in Tennessee since '87 and Nashville since 2000. Damn. So okay. I, I like I I feel like I'm I've lived in Nashville longer than I've lived anywhere else. Me so too. this is home to me. You know? I had that realization the other day. Somebody was like, "Where are you from?" I was like, "From Detroit." I was like, "But I've been here since '99." Yeah. Like, damn, I've been in Nashville longer than I was in Detroit. Yeah. Does that make you, can you officially say you're from, like, how does that know. work? Man? I tell people I'm from a small fishing village on one of Neptune's moons. It's just, it's less questions. <laughs> like, you tell somebody you're from Nashville, like, native? Were you born here? What hospital? What? You? It's like, leave me alone. Are you checking, <laughs> yeah. like, do you want to see my papers? Is that the problem? Like, <laughs> come on. I, I, I predate the Gulch. When I moved here, the Gulch was burned out old warehouses where bands shot sad music videos. Is yeah. that, does that count me as a Nashvillian? Yeah. You know, Capitol View used to be Hell's Half Acre. I know that. Does that make me Nashville? Man. <laughs> Man. Yeah. You ain't lying. Yeah. Uh, when you start doing comedy? Uh, the, almost immediately, as soon as I got here, uh, so the fall, like November of uh, 2000. You weren't, were you doing, so you just like, you know, I'm going to do comedy. What, how, tell me, the, how, the, how so the hell So I've been happened? writing jokes, I mean, I, like I knew when I was a little kid, when I was in like third grade, I started watching Letterman on TV, and I was reading Mad Magazine and listening to Weird Al, and I thought, this is what I want to do. But there's nobody in show business in my family, and the internet didn't exist, and so it's like I had no way of knowing that this was a real career path I could actually do. Yeah. But I saw, when I, as I got into David Letterman more and more, I saw, okay, well, he worked in local TV and radio and then moved to L.A. and did comedy. I thought, okay, well, I will do that. And so, like, you know, I went to college, and I was doing TV stuff in Knoxville, and I realized, I was like, these people don't want to produce comedy shows at yeah. these local stations I'm working at. They don't care, and there's nowhere to perform in town. I was like, I'm wasting my life. And so, you know, you know, I started looking, like, where can I go do comedy? And I looked at Atlanta and Nashville, and Nashville was in-state, and Zanies had a pretty fire lineup and so i was like let's do that and there's also there was a girl over here i wanted so i moved here for a girl and accidentally ended up at zany's but no i i went to open mics and um after three months open mics like i had a weekly show at zany's that lasted seven no 11 months and then they started using me as a, a house mc there for the next five six years and then i was on the road full time so yeah um yeah it's been it's been wild now i've been able to work with everybody everybody yeah. Who I admire and respect, and That's dope, ain't it's, it? it's it's insane. We're so lucky in this town to have that because mo a lot of towns have comedy clubs, but they don't have the caliber of talent that Zanies yeah. draws in here. Yeah. So you know, it's been it's been pretty amazing. So quick side note, yeah, that girl <laughs> didn't work out. I stayed I stayed <laughs> with her for three days, and then I was out, and I was Not sleeping on three my, days, three days, and so I was staying with my buddy uh, for a couple weeks before I got my own place. But yeah, she she. she God bless her. I love her, but uh, you know. You ever see her on Facebook or anything? I'm off Facebook, but uh, I know that she's doing really well. She's in Atlanta. She's got a family. I wish her the best. She's the best. she's one of my favorite people of all time. Man, you just said you're off Facebook so fast. I'm out. Sure. Yeah. What What happened, man? I'm just done. Like I like after all the misinformation that has been spread in the last you know five six years. I don't know. 
I think Facebook is the problem, and they're not going anywhere to fix it. They're not. And the only reason I was ever on there was to promote shows. Yeah. And all of that's been neutered. So, yeah. like, if I post, you know, my show flyers and Facebook events and stuff like that, it, it doesn't hit the eyeballs that it used to. No. And and they they will charge you for advertising, but it doesn't. Like, I I see my web stats on my website. I'm a nerd, and I know the traffic is not coming from Facebook ads. Yeah. So, like, when they tell me those numbers, I know it's lies. Yeah. So I'm I'm just I'm out. Like, there's no reason for me to be there anymore. Yeah. Man, I like your style, man. <laughs> you got principles and you stand on them. I do, yeah. It's, I will destroy my own life to, to do some vigilante justice if I think somebody is messing up and they need to be taken down. Yeah. I will destroy my own life to make a, a point that nobody even cares about. You know what, man? I will do that over and over again. Somebody cares. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, you know? even when it's happening, you guys remember that. Yeah. I care. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. So... So back to the show. When is the show? So let's see. We're doing the taping cast. on September 25th. I believe that's a Saturday at uh, 7 p.m. And we'll have a, a bunch of heavy hitters. Uh, so far, we've got Jasper Platts, Sean Parrott, DJ Buckley, Josh Lewis. And there's a handful of other people that I can't mention yet that we, we have, we're waiting on confirmation. But okay. it's, it's going to be the best of the best. And we'll do this uh, several more times and, and keep bringing in um, you know, right, so this is going to be uh, re like it's going to happen again and again. Yeah, I want to do the first of many. Th yes, I would like to do this particular show once a month ah, and, and yeah. have like constantly bringing people in who are funny and then putting up these these short sets so that we can, you know, constantly, you know, introduce the audience to these brilliant comics that are working really, really hard. Yeah. Um, who, who you should know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and honestly, will know. Like, one of the best, most famous comics working right now is Nate Bergazzi, and he's from here, and, you know, he moved to Chicago for a while, he moved to New York for a while, he moved to L.A. for a while, but he's back here because he can at this point yeah. in his career. He doesn't need L.A. Yeah. L.A. needs him. Yeah. So he's back here, but, like, literally everybody could have the same story that guy does. He, yeah. you know, barely graduated high school, dropped out of college after a semester, but he's the funniest dude you'll ever meet. Yeah. And you can do that, too. And it's some of these guys in town are on that path where yeah. they will achieve, you know, national, international fame and success. And the greatest thing for me is going to an open mic and seeing somebody go up for the first time ever who you know is going to be great. Yeah. But then there's also, on that same show, somebody who's absolutely insane. Yeah. Who will be there around for maybe a couple years, then you'll never see him again. But every conversation you have with every other comic for the you'll next decade, that, that damn you'll dude. ask about that dude. You remember yeah. that guy? What the hell happened to him? Yeah. Like, that's, that's like what's I've seen him at Shoney's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh... Man, it's pretty cool, man. It's really cool when you have, especially where Nashville is. And what I heard was, you might know more about this than me, man. I heard that Nashville is one of the, is it biggest up and coming scenes for comedy? It's, is this true? It's on the rise. I wouldn't say the biggest. I mean, there's you've always got your big classic comedy scenes. But, you know, New York, L.A., Chicago, Chicago is yeah. always going to be the top three. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Minneapolis is amazing. Boston, always amazing. Austin, you know, the, like all the, the biggest travel cities you want to go to anyway yeah. all have great comedy scenes. San Francisco. But but um, Nashville has, has exploded. I've been here 20 years, and there when I started, there was one open mic once a week. And now, like I say, there's three, four a night. There's tons of local showcases where it's booked. It's not open mic. It's carefully hand-selected comics coming in to do their best, whatever, 10, 15. Yeah. And you know, curated shows, different theme shows. We've got Zanies. We've got Third Coast. We've got the Comedy Bar downtown on 3rd. And then you've got uh, independently run rooms. And like I say, stuff that goes on at the East Room, which is a huge supporter of national comedy. Yeah. And all these other clubs in town, East, uh, uh, like Exit In, like Basement East, like – all these clubs will do a good show if we put together a good lineup and I pitch it to them. Springwater, same deal. Yeah. Like they'll, they're eager and excited to have these brilliant comics coming from out of town and these guys in town that they want to support and uplift as well. So it's it's been like it's it's a it, Nashville's an amazing town as you know, full of Man. you know uh, so much industry and and media and it's a high caliber of talent yeah, on these stages is. already. Yeah, so is. if you're not good as a comic you know, you're not going to cut it. Like, people are, you know, you, the, the audiences in Nashville expect a high level of uh, entertainment. And so they, you yeah. really got to bring it. 
Entertainment all around. All right. So yeah. yeah. So it's been it's been good to come up in this scene, because all, all boats will rise. You know, with the time. So it's been yeah. Nashville's a special place, and it's interesting yeah. and different than it, you know most other markets you go to. So you kind of like. Uh, you're down there like Comedy Moses, huh? <laughs> I don't know if it's biblical what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, But, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I don't know. So you, split, you split it wide open. I mean, really, honestly, that's where I checked that for my open mics. I went to that, that Nashville stand-up. Stand .com. Yeah, I didn't know that that was you, man. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, you the yeah. man for real. Well, another comic uh, set up that site in the late 90s, and then he <laughs> moved to Bosnia to teach and train young women how not to be sold as sex slaves. Shut the hell up. Are Absolutely real. And uh, he was over there on a, uh, some grant, uh, and he's a comic, but he was over there on some like government grant doing that good work, and then he started a media company over there, and he's got, like, he's a multimillionaire running a media network over there. And so when he was moving out of Nashville, he was like, Chad, you're a nerd. Do you want this website? And I'm like, sure. And so at the time, it was just a list of, like, the eight comics in town who had a website and a, a link to Zanies, and that's it. And I've you know tried to build a community and do some other yeah. stuff and so yeah we've come we've come a long way and we filed papers to be a, a official nonprofit a public charity actually is the the designation we have so because we're doing good work for the for people who you know don't know what else don't know how to do this like we're teaching yeah that's real man yeah. that's real okay since I did one I got to do another one all right man we're gonna go to one more of these non commercial breaks all right because you know you can't. You can't have no call to action on kneecap, man. Oh, of course not. Yeah, yeah. You can't tell them to go do nothing. Right. But I can tell you to uh, go away and come back in a couple <laughs> minutes. Better you not. Know? Yeah, yeah. All right. And we're back. Ooh, that was so fast, wasn't it? Quick. That was so fast like it never even happened. Yeah, lightning. So we here with my man, Chad Riding. It's been really cool. Man, it's been cool sitting here actually... That's why I'm glad we kind of saved the conversation more for now than yeah. talking before. Because, uh, yeah, you're pretty interesting dude, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, I try. I try my best. Everybody's not a fan. I ran for governor uh, a couple of years ago, three years ago. I ran for mayor like eight years ago. And I just, I'm looking for- You really for, ran for governor? Yeah, I did. I got I, can't, I got 1,096 votes of true believers, Chattanoians out there. Came in 14th out of 28 different candidates i'm trying man and it, like the media didn't really know how to handle that because they're like you're a comic who does publicity stunts we know you you break the same goodness world record over and over and over you ran from it like they I don't, they didn't know how to take it and then yeah. every time i went to any event to talk i just said exactly what i thought and talk smack about Bill Lee and, uh, and all of his little cronies and marsha blackbird like i just said what i actually feel and people hated it so like, I, I lost work as a comic, and I, uh, I did not make any inroads. It didn't bring me the fame and fortune and publicity that, that I was looking for. Man, it listen, hurt man. me to no end. It devastated my career. That was, like, completely not where I expected you was going with it. No, it, it, ruined, like, it, ruined my, it honestly <laughs> ruined my life. It drained my finances. Like, it's just a money pit. It's a money machine. If you're not a millionaire, and that's why, that's the thing. You tell somebody you're running for governor, they're like, you're insane. Yeah. Only millionaires. Yeah. This is a game for millionaires. You're out of your mind. Yeah. And, yeah, I am. Yeah, but it are. was fun. It sounds fun, man. Yeah, I'll never do it again. It sounds fun. You going to run for anything else? I don't know. I'm thinking about running against Marsha Blackbird, quite honestly. I think that would be sweet. I, I'd be down to help you. Yeah. I, I'm just yeah. so tired of these people talking about how they represent Tennesseans or Christians or whatever. It's like, no, you don't. Yeah. You're the exact opposite of both of those things. Man, these people are pretty whack, man. Yeah, it's terrible. That's this, a, this is a horrifying world, and I'm just trying to have some fun and, and show – S spread some light to some people You're in this doing world it, of darkness. You're man. doing it, man. You like you supporting <laughs> the the comedians, man. People need that shit, man. And you like, yeah. You doing it, man. You spreading the funny. Yeah. That's what people need. Thank but you. But like Marsha Blackburn, she is pretty whack. Terrible. Yeah, it's Awful like person. I can't believe 2020 showed me what 2020 showed me. Most people are dumb as hell. Yes. I did not. I was not aware of that. Yeah. I thought people were way smarter than they are. Nope, they will disappoint you, and that's the thing. Like you, you start writing yeah. jokes about dumb people. The audience is small. <laughs> like you better write nah. jokes about <laughs> making fun of, you know, <laughs> because 
you, you, do you want to be successful? Why yeah. are you making fun of dumb people? Oh my god. Uh, yeah, it's the worst, yeah. man. It's yeah, it is the, the worst, worst, man. But it's you know I was uh, watching this thing about what is it? What's the dude from Key and Peele? Keegan Michael Key? Yeah. He did uh, this history of I don't think it was stand up. I think it was sketch comedy. Okay. On Audible. It was ah, like, a, oh, it's pretty. Oh, it's pretty dope. It's yeah. pretty dope. And he's breaking it down. And he's talking about like the court gestures. And he was like, that's that was the only person. Nobody could talk shit to the king. Right. Nobody at all. You right. get killed. The only person was this weirdo, crazy person. Yeah. And it was dangerous because yep. you go in there and you saying some wild stuff to this person and you better make them laugh. Or if yep. not, like you'll get killed. Absolutely. Yeah. And that was See, the only person that could speak truth to power in react like in real literally that's absolutely true and i agree I, you see this tuxedo i wear this for a reason they say dress for the job you want not the job you have i used to say i wanted to be uh, frank sinatra that's not true i want to be don rickles i want to be sitting next to that guy making fun of him the only guy who could bust uh, uh, Frank Sinatra's balls was Don Rickles. Yes, and that's what I want to be. Yes, I want to. I want to just be having fun, making fun of the powerful rich guy sitting right there that paid my bills. Yeah. <laughs> you know, man, that's real. Yeah, man. that is so real. Like, man, it's been really cool. Like talking to you. It's been great talking to you. This is fun. Yeah, we're gonna do some more cool stuff too, man. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I gotta step my actual comedy game up. I mean, I'm kind of funny, man. I, I believe you, yeah. and, and, and like honestly, anybody, anybody, I believe anybody can write five minutes of original material based on whatever they've got bouncing around in their head. If yeah. you if you can't, like we can help you, and like I say, there's books available in, in classes. Like my buddy Mark Nelson teaches classes at Third Coast. Rick Roberts is another guy in town that teaches classes, and you know, but if you just come out to open mics and you sit and you watch one week, write your best five and come back the next week, I guarantee you, you'll make friends and have fun. Like it's it's just a great time. That sounds like a a, a threat for a good time. He said you're gonna make you, friends and have fun. You will. You will find. I mean, it may not be the friends you want, but you <laughs> you will <laughs> gravitate to crazy. the people that are more like you, and you'll find whatever you're into. You'll find those idiots running around, you know, doing stuff in town. All right, so you're gonna help me with my comedy part. I got the on stage and the funny part. Like I can get up there, yeah. which which I had to make a. We got like 30 seconds, but I had to make a like a decision real quick. It was like, okay, do I want to be a comedian or do I just want to get some laughs? And then I cut off the comedian, and then I was the greatest. Yeah. But then I'm not doing the comedian thing, man. I want to be better. like better. Do you want this life of misery and poverty? No. Show yeah. up every once in a while, get your laughs, have fun, and have a good life. Don't destroy your life doing comedy. Damn, man, that sounds <laughs> sound like a dare ad right there. Though. <laughs> I used to do, You make like comedy a, sound like crack. It's like a scared straight program. <laughs> I got asked to come to a, a, a school and do a, a career day for stand-up comedy. I was like, kids, don't do this. And we got three seconds, y'all. That was the message, don't do this. Thank y'all. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Damn, I should have wrapped it up earlier, but I was having fun talking to you, man. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. And you got some interesting man. to work with. And, you know, eventually somebody will be like, yeah, and be like, what happened, buddy? And then you start getting into it. And, you know, aside from somebody special to them dying, like, it can be funny. It's going to be something funny in yeah. there. That's a good one. Absolutely. And then they're going to feel better. Because, like, they thought, shit, this has been such a shitty day. I'm going to go to a comedy show and laugh at these idiots. It's, like, so much. Because, like, what I'll do is I'll scan around the room and I'll look at people's body language. And if somebody's closed off, uh, if somebody is, like, not making eye contact or if they have, like, if they're if they look down yeah or distressed or distracted you have to fix that otherwise it'll fuck the room up it fucks up the everything yeah the people around them initially yeah. and then yeah it grows to the whole all it, the way it, unless you take care of that if somebody's got yeah. a bad attitude if they're making a mistake and, and, and being disruptive like you've got to deal with it yeah and so i like scanning the room and finding people like that and just figuring out what's wrong yeah and you get good stuff out of it sometimes yeah and then like you can roll with that and then like, it's a trick I learned from Letterman because he will come out before the show starts taping and, and do audience interaction for three minutes and then call back to it through the, throughout the show and point to somebody in the audience. You've seen this where the camera cuts to somebody. He's like, 
you know, Sally from Wichita, something weird about pies, you know, and everybody laughs. You don't know what he's talking about. But everybody, his audience knows yeah. he was so there. So it's like, I, I like doing that throughout the show, if you can, and get a little something going that's unique. Like comedy specials you see on TV, say Comedy Central, for example, Netflix, yeah. that's been shot and edited and passed through the corporate filter a dozen times as they make sure all the sponsors and everybody's cool with everything that's going mm -hmm. on. But in a live show... Like it, the, what makes it fun is it's raw and interesting, and you can't recreate those moments anywhere else. Even right. if they're on tape, like the the interactions between you and that crowd were unique to that moment. And that's what's fun. Yeah, you know. No, that's super real, man. Yeah. So you got all type of damn tips and tricks in this shit. <laughs> I uh, I've forgotten uh, all the best lessons of comedy. Like I I am worse now than I was ten years ago. I'll tell you that. Outside <laughs> of just doing it right, outside of just like being on stage. Yeah. Where'd you get the most like uh, tips and shit? Like, where'd you get the most help being a dope comedian outside of just straight up repetitions? Watching other comics who are better than me and working with them and being around people uh, who are really trying. Like, it's like your mom will tell you, like, you know, don't hang out with him; he'll drag you down. Yeah. Well, people will lift you up too. So if you're around amazing people who are doing good stuff and they're constantly trying to get better yeah like you will too yeah and so yeah it, you know if i didn't have a show i would hang out at zany's and sit in the back of the room and just watch and learn yeah even if it was a comic i didn't think i would like and didn't like there's something i can learn from them and maybe it's what not to do you really got to be a student of the shit like for real all it, the time you, you know you don't have somebody to be, told it, me it, that somebody said that it certainly helps and so like i and, and sitting in the back of that room like, I, I got work out of that where somebody didn't show up or the owner of the club walked through and was like, what are you doing next week? And I got work that way. So it's like if, if you show that and you are into it and you're locked in to that whole world, yeah. people reward that. Yeah. Like the, the, the guy that runs Zanies, Brian Dorfman, he found out that a local comic didn't have an apartment was working as hard as he could doing stand-up shows and sleeping on his waitress's floors. So he was this cat was working so hard at comedy, he had nothing. And and he he was completely mobile. He had a backpack and his car and that's it. And he was sleeping on the floors of the waitresses at Zany's. And as soon as this dude heard that, he was like, "Yeah, get that guy on my stage. He's dedicated." So Billy uh. Wayne Davis, great comic, brilliant and uh, you know, doing amazing stuff out there because he does have that drive. And it, it that's what it takes, honestly. That's real. You know? That's real as shit. Yeah. That's real as shit. All right, man. That was cool. I just need those, like, quick tips like that, man. And the other thing about comedy that got me, man, was the fact that by just being you, like, as a comedian, is you. Yeah. And you... You got it. They got to do... Like, y'all do a lot of fucking riding to Jackson, Tennessee, oh, yeah. or... It's a lot of driving Johnsonville, around. Kentucky to yeah. do a random fucking show yeah. for nothing. Yes. Years it, of that shit. It's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of driving around. Now, thankfully, I love to drive. Yeah. And I'm really creative in the car. I write a lot of my material while I'm driving, screaming at my radio or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I should write that down. You know, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of that. But I, I always say it's easier to drive to a new town than it is to write a new joke. Once you've got the jokes, you, it makes sense to, to get everywhere. out there because yeah. you you know if i keep driving they they'll keep laughing if i stay here and i tell the same jokes over and over like it, it comes to a that's part of it too you, you see people burn out and it's because they don't go on the road or they don't do the road well and figure out how to make money doing it as somebody who's not famous you yeah. know so it's it, yeah but how long how long was it before you like Made enough to feel good about yourself. I still don't feel good about myself. <laughs> but I started, I worked, let's see, I, like, House MC at Zany's was really good, but I was also had a job at Vanderbilt at the time doing web development. So, like, I was taken care of. Yeah. And then my wife quit her job and started going to nursing school, and it was all on me as a breadwinner. And during that period, I quit my job and was doing comedy full time, like, 2007. Really? So I was on the road supporting her while she was in school, still paying the house off, all this other stuff, and juggling. Now, we built up. Off comedy? Yeah. 
Now, we, we put a lot of stuff on credit cards, and we ended up with a lot of debt, and we ended up filing bankruptcy in 2011. So don't follow my path, because it did not end up well. Bankruptcy, foreclosure, and uh, divorce in three months. I told you I got married and got all that stuff in three months. It all went away about... 11 years, nine years later in the same time frame. So Damn. It's, 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 uh, it comes and it goes, you Damn. know, but, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, but yeah, you can support yourself. Like for me, the key was like, I started brewing my own biodiesel out of waste vegetable oil and I bought a diesel car I could take on the road. So I was spending 25 cents a gallon on fuel instead of three bucks. So that was step one. And then having t-shirts and a CD to sell after the show huge so mm. i could make hundreds of dollars after a show that paid jack mm. you know if i had my merch game together and mm. i did so you know that's part of it too and th th that's how i was able to make it work is is have merch sales after yeah shows. it wasn't just straight up like getting paid for the show you get yeah but you could go do a show like if i do an hour like at that time if i did an hour as a headliner you get like six or eight hundred bucks a, a, a night and if uh, I, I pull out my merch game and sell merch after one show, I could make three, four hundred dollars on top of that. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah. like, why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, you got to do it. Yeah. That's real. Man, I appreciate that shit, man. I I like the comedy thing, man. It's just like, it, it scared me, man, when I couldn't be funny with jokes. Yeah. Like, I could be, I can do it all day long up there like you said dude said you got to have your material yeah. when it comes time to having material i didn't have my material yeah you the, know? Way, the way i do open mics now is i'll go and i'll have like two jokes i've written that i want to try but i'll sit there and i like to go up later in the show because i want to watch everybody else who goes up and listen to them and then riff off of them and make some joke uh add a tag to their bit or uh you know say something funny that they've inspired me to say and so like if it goes well i go up and i've got five minutes of me just doing stuff i made up at that show yeah. you know which i would rather do that than the three jokes i wrote you know you still do open mics i will occasionally not as often as i did before i you know like i say like my the most i ever did like uh the most shows i ever did in one week was 2000 uh Seven, I think, where I did, I was emceeing at Zany's, and so I had whatever it was, eight, nine shows, and then I did every other show in town that week that was independent, and so I did 16 shows in seven days. Uh, th back, th that was the most I did. I was, I was uh, grinding. I was grinding pretty hard, but uh, I don't do that anymore. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm fat and lazy, and I'm, I'm tired. So yeah, like I'll, I'll get out every once in a while because I want to hang out with friends and I want to be sociable and, yeah, and do stuff and try stuff. But yeah, I'm the cool shit is like transitioning all that shit to especially with that Rona, man. Yeah. Transitioning into like I mean, I guess to say content, but like TV and yeah. If you got all the fucking funny people, right. you know what I'm saying? Funny yeah. people make all the shit work. Yeah. So, yeah, I I've been trying to focus on doing stuff on online. So, I've been yeah. like live streaming shows on Twitch and YouTube and filming funny things at the house and you know, like I I filmed a couple things this year like we did an outdoor taping like mars variety show jason marsden uh, has this variety show he does and it's pretty great and it was all filmed outside so it's like i feel comfortable doing that outside open air like that's fine but i, I i've tried not to be doing a lot of indoor shows uh you know at all just because i i feel like it's risky for me yeah you know i feel that we've been trying to put together this like i don't I want to say Nashville Saturday Night Live, but like not Saturday Night Live, just yeah. like the Nashville cool version of it. Yeah, and it's not all, not all sketch. Right. Some of the shit is even like content people made, but man, yeah. I think the with the amount of people here, mm -hmm. the amazing, it's some amazing people in Nashville. Man. Absolutely. I didn't been a lot of places. We got the weirdest concentration of amazing people, it's cause, and they're. They're cool. It's yeah. like it's got an asshole filter on it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's not as many assholes as like when I'm in LA or New York. It's not as many assholes here in the creative community amongst each other. Right. My yeah. experience has been like if I respect their art and I have the opportunity to meet them, in general, I've been lucky enough to think that those people I respect are also cool off stage. Like the, the people who are dicks. Like, I didn't respect their art anyway. Right. Like, there's something going on with them already. Right, right, know? right. 
it's like uh it, I guess that's cooler in comedy, but like with music and stuff, I hate meeting people I looked up to. Oh yeah. I fucking hate it because they ruin it. <laughs> they ruin it. They ruin it. Nine out of ten times, eight out of ten times, they ruin it. Yeah. I said I'd rather stay away because yeah. I don't want to ruin it. Man, so many people fuck my childhood up, man. Yeah, you get to like meet and hang with them, and you're like, are you fucking serious? One time I was in, I was watching uh, the Tarantino film, ha uh, Hateful Eight. What? Uh, uh, Maybe it was uh, the, the one with the intermission, and I yeah. was at a theater in Franklin, and this woman and her husband in front of me wouldn't shut the fuck up. They were awful, and like we shushed a couple times, and it was just like I don't like the be whole movie, the whole thing, and just incessant, and we we're like it was disturbing. Like people around us were like, God damn, and we're like, God. So like at some point, I just said, Hey, you gotta shut the fuck up. And she turned around, and it was Winona Judd and her husband, Cactus. Cactus. <laughs> and she was, uh, they did the thing, like, uh, you know, do you know who she is? I'm like, yeah, I don't give a don't fuck give who a you fuck. are. In this movie right now, just shut up. Yeah, you're ruining this for everybody. Behave yourself. Yeah. And so, like, it comes to that intermission in the movie, and she gets up and goes to the bathroom without saying a word to me. And he turns around, and he wants to have a little confrontation. And he was like, I don't appreciate you talking to her that way. He's like, I was talking to you. I just Asshole. turned it all around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, I wasn't disrespecting her at yeah, all. Yeah, I was talking to you. You need to shut the shut fuck the up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I felt so bad, but it's like, I, no, I really man, don't. That's it's like, great. No. Behave yourself. Yeah. Like, you're, you, everybody knows it's you being a twat. Like, don't, why would you do that? Why would you do that? It's insane to me. You know. I feel you, man. Yeah, whatever. Well, shit, man, we've been done, man. I, just, <laughs> I was like, record this shit, because this is actually the cool part. Yeah. I want to do these more like this part, where you're just talking about the shit instead of like, yeah. I know you got to do the formal thing. Hey, we're going to talk about the show and all that, but like, you got a bunch of cool ass information. You've been doing that shit for a long time yeah. on like a high level. You started where everybody else started at, and yeah. now you're doing that shit helping everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's valuable as fuck. Like, whatever's. Run around that crazy ass head of yours. <laughs> you got good quality information, man. Yeah, it's it's been fun and it's something I love to do. And uh, again, like you're surrounding yourself with just the the wackiest you know nut jobs in the in the world. And then when your stupid friends come in from out of town, from other you know, you get to see the, like these people that are traveling from other cities. You see them maybe once or twice a year tops. And so it's it's nice that because we're all part of this little tiny cult of people who just talk shit for a living. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's Fucking weird, but it's fun. Yeah, it is fun. I have a lot of comedian homies, it is fun. And everybody really is a little bit off. Yeah. A tad bit off. You got to be a little bit thrown off to, like, do that shit all the time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, something, right? Yeah. People be all depressed. I know comedians, they be fucking depressed and... But they get up there and... Well, I think th there's that stereotype that comedians are depressed, but I think a lot of people are depressed. I think yeah. comedians talk about it a little more. That's it. Than that, the average guy. The average they, person is like, I don't want to show yeah. weakness. I don't want to you know, bum people out. And we're all like, I'm going to ruin your day. Here, listen to how horrible my life is. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But like, that's also... like, it, even if, Like I told you, I went through bankruptcy, foreclosure, divorce. Maybe somebody hasn't been through that, but they understand heartbreak loss and financial troubles so if you just talk and tell your story like people can connect with you on an emotional level that even if they can't connect you know on the the specifics of what you're going through so it's yeah. like you know at the time i was going through all that there was the financial crisis everybody was losing their house so like i i did really well you know talking about losing it all like, it is the greatest thing that happened in my career, honestly, is losing my house and my wife. Man, I lost my damn house during all that shit, too. Crazy. Crazy as hell. I, I bought when the market was high, and we got out of it when the market was higher. Yeah. Or when the market was tanked. Like, my yeah. neighbor put $40,000 into the exact same house I have, couldn't get anybody to look at it. And so I was like, we ain't selling this. We got to get out. And so we, <laughs> this is what we did. I told you we had debt. Yeah. My, we had student loans. I dodged the IRS for four years. Big long story. Uh, don't do that. Oh, but no, uh, do that. like when I learned when I was researching bankruptcy, I was like, okay, there's two types of debt that don't go away with bankruptcy: student loans and IRS debt. Unless you put that shit on credit cards first and then you file bankruptcy, I'm debt free. 
So that's what we did. We, we put all oh, that shit on credit that cards. That is sweet. And we walked away from the house and the marriage, and we had nothing. We, you know, each of us had less than $20,000 in assets allowed by the law. But um, I basically had my car and my clothes and my books and CDs and stuff. <laughs> That's it, sweet. I, but that yeah, smart. we walked away without you know the debt and got out of the house. You know, it was crazy. But yeah, man, I had like a uh, big like fucking record deal, TV deal and shit, and I made a bunch of money. And then when I stopped doing that, when I left that, the year, the year after, the two years after, I thought that with the accountants and shit that we had paid the whatever was left on the tax, I paid a whole lot of taxes, but it was still some there. But I didn't have money like I had money then. Yeah. Man, they froze my account one day. And it was like the day when everything is supposed to come out, like uh, rent and yeah. everything. Yeah. And they took everything then. So now all of that shit's going negative. Ugh. They took the money. It was like, that's all I got. Yeah. They took it. Man, I went down to the IRS office, man. Man, I passed out on the floor. I started shaking and I started breathing hard. They're like, sir, are you all right? No. I'm like, no, no, I Obviously can't. I started not. crying. They gave me some of it back. They felt bad for me. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm feeling weak. You can negotiate with them. I didn't realize yeah. that. Uh, I mean, I didn't even try, but my brother did the same stupid thing I did as far as dodging them. And he just called them up and was like, listen, I made a mistake. I got dragged into something I shouldn't have. What do I do? And they were like, look, if you pay a third of what you owe us. Offering we're compromise. Good. That's yeah. what I end up doing. So, And I paid less than a third. Yeah. They got offering it just to anybody. If you they, hear this Because they know you're not going to pay them nothing if you can't ever survive. It. Like, if you don't yeah. have it. Yeah, you won't So they take what all. they can get. They just want to close that account out. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, that's real. Well, man, I appreciate this time, man. That's I appreciate your time. Cool. This is great. Hell yeah. Man, we got to yeah, we gotta do some cool shit, man. I, I got a feeling me and you could do some, some real ill shit. Yeah, that'd be fun.